Hello everyone, welcome to Marine Minister. So today we will be discussing on an important topic that is MLC latest amendment of 2025. So these amendments were adopted in the recent ILO conference as we know MLC comes under ILO International Labour Organization. These were adopted in ILO conference which held in June 2025. Okay, so we'll be referring to them and the amendments which I will be teaching you today are just few of the complete amendments which would be sufficient to sow in the orals. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. So the first change has happened in regulation 2.4. Okay, so I'll show you the text of MLC now. So there are various titles under which we have regulation. So there is regulation 2.4 entitlement to leave. Under this, we know in MLC, each regulation is divided into two parts. One is a standard, the mandatory thing which you have to follow. And one is a guideline, which is a recommendation. So the change has happened in the standard 2.4. So if you see the name of the standard, it is written as entitlement to leave. So this word, the title has changed, only this word has changed to something called as annual leave. So that is the first amendment which you can say. If you remember this uh, 2.4, is it okay? It's okay. If not, you can still remember so the standard 2.4 or standard entitlement to leave has been renamed to something called as annually so that is what you can say now moving on to the second amendment replacing the heading by standard 2.1 as annual leave okay so now this is the old one which i showed you just now this is the new one how it will be seen later now there's a new standard added in 2.4 2.4 was the one which we just had a glance. So I'll go back into it. If you see this text of MLC, this convention by ILO, the original text, you can see guideline 2.4 and then 2.4, 2.4 guideline and then directly they go to 2.5. There is no more standard in between. Right? There is no more standard. There is only and only one standard which is also renamed now. That is 2.4. So what they say as per the latest change we will have in the after the amendment one more standard that will be named as standard 2.4.2 it will be standing for your the name would be named as surely so that is the next amendment i am showing you new standard is added in mlc convention that is surely the number of that will be 2.4.2 so here we have some important changes which we need to focus on. So the first one they say each member, when we say the word member, member refers to your country who has ratified or is a party to MLC. Party means who follows the MLC, who has included MLC in their national law. Okay. So each member, the country, what we mean here, shall ensure that seafarers are allowed ashore by public authorities while the ship on which they arrive is in a port in its due section. Suppose we take an example, a foreign ship comes to India in the port of Mumbai. So Mumbai is under the due section of India. So India should allow the seafarers, if they want to go to shore leave, they can go. Okay doing the required for formalities so they should allow their shore leave and they should not refuse permission okay like public health public safety security or public order okay. they should not refuse the permission but there are some scenarios which they may and will see something about it second thing they say shore leave shall be allowed in a manner which excludes discrimination on any grounds irrespective of flag state of the ship to which the seafarer are employed, engaged or worked. 
you might have seen sometimes if you have been like if you are indian by nationality or some other nationality when you go to certain countries they do not allow particular nationality to go ashore and some of the nationality they allow so such discrimination will not be allowed anymore and such discrimination of seafarers because of the country to which they belong okay or to the or the ship on which they are sailing it might be of some other flag state right? and so that should not be done anymore the third point here they say the seafarers need not to have a visa or a permit for shore leave so that's the third point the fourth point is the important one this is going to empower you more suppose still the country says that i will not allow you to go ashore and i have some of my reasons so here they say in case where permission for shore leave have been refused the relevant public authorities shall communicate the reasons for such denial to seafarer and the master and if you want you can ask him give me the reason in writing so that is there they have written if requested by seafarer or the master such reasons shall be provided in writing so you can take these highlights over here shore leave has been introduced as a new standard in the regulations then the seafarer should be allowed to go ashore without any discrimination irrespective of the flag state of the ship which they sail or the nationality the third case is if somebody is refusing that we will not allow you to go ashore then they have to explain why reason and if you want they have to give it in writing so that is the second amendment which is important for us then going on to the third one that is with respect to your repatriation if i open up the mlc text again you will see regulation number 2.5 talks about repatriation okay so here if you see in standard 2.5.1 how many points are there 1 2 3 like this and it ends at 9 only 9 So now there are two major changes which have happened here. The first one is they are saying that again the countries, the member states, or any member who is party to convention, shall facilitate the repatriation of seafarers in a manner which excludes discrimination on any grounds and irrespective of flag state of the ship on which they are employed, engaged, or work. So just like we saw a few minutes before. Uh, or the last amendment like they should not dis do discrimination for the shore leave they should not discriminate the crew for repatriation like you cannot say you belong to this nationality and i will not allow your sign off from my country so that is not allowed so this paragraph has been added further into the same standard we have a new change a new paragraph number 3 has been added and others are accordingly renumbered eh? so it is paragraph 3 if you see here in the this currently what is the paragraph number 3 here it talks about prohibit ship owners and all eh? it is nothing like like i am showing in the ppt but it is something like this but if you see over here this is just to make you sure it is under 2.5.1 now they have added this new paragraph so here they have clarified the cost to be borne by ship owner for repatriation under paragraph shall include these following so what all money to be paid by ship owner during the repatriation so he should pay for your passage to destination like your uh, when you sign on you fill a contract and whichever you say your home port or destination he should arrange for your accommodation and food from the time you start uh, the sign off for repatriation from ship till you reach the so, transportation up to 30 kg of seafarer personal luggage they should allow for that luggage also and medical treatment if you fall sick or something happens during traveling okay so they should arrange for the treatment also so what we can say to sum it up in the overall we can say this statement a new provision has been added or incorporated to clarify the cost to be borne by ship owners 
for repatriation so what are those cost which we just saw one is like the tickets the luggage the food accommodation and medical treatment when it is needed for the seafarer until unless they are medically fit coming on to the last amendment of today of this video is with respect to regulation number 5 if you remember title number 5 there are responsibilities of the flag state okay there are responsibilities of the flag state over here so let me just show you <coughs> you go over here this is under title number 5 okay so here they say this is the regulation 5.1.6 so what they are saying here they are referring to your 5.1.6 that is marine casualties so that is your marine casualties so here if you see in this they have mentioned few lines and there is nothing below the standards they have written no provisions and no provisions in guidelines and in marine casualties that is empty so some text has been added as per the recent amendment you can see i've just taken a screenshot from the from the convention posted here no provisions no provisions so what they have done here they have added new text below that standard below that empty space basically here so it is referring to your it is basically referring to your investigation in the marine casualty what is casualty basically i will not go into the definitions like we have in casualty investigation code so casualty means something has happened then all people come together they do the investigation they try to find the cause and then try to rectify that part so that we can improve the conventions accordingly that is how the amendments come into picture okay so over here they have told whenever a seafarer is taken uh, like some my flag state is talking about an seafarer for investigation like let us say if the incident of mv dali has happened you know the one uh, which happened where they struck the bridge there is a elision between the ship and bridge so when the seafarers are taken for investigation or the interviews whatever we call the seafarer should be treated fairly okay the seafarer should be treated fairly with respect to what there are some imo guidelines and ilo guidelines on fair treatment of seafarers whenever the flag state or any other state they are or any affected state is doing the investigation for uh, casualty you know so they should keep these guidelines for fair treatment of seafarers so this you can say you should keep this in mind the country should keep this in mind the government should keep this in mind when doing the investigations you know like we have seen in the movies they say i will not speak till i have a right some human right i have a right to speak to my lawyer like that like that huh? just to keep, keep it think think simple for you huh? so these are some of the important five amendments which you can remember and tell in the orals okay so that's all from my end thank you guys if you like the video you can tell us something else if you want me to cover or some additional information if you need thank you please subscribe to the channel thank you have a good day